More on the rim, Chairman. Meltdown. Let's bring in our friend Paul Kodrowski, Bloomberg contributing editor and author of the blog Infectious Greed. Paul joins us from San Diego. Hey, Paul. Hey, so, family. It's just not fair. Not words you expect <laughs> to hear from the CEO of a major public company. I mean, shouldn't he be better prepared for, to deal with this kind of criticism? Yeah, well, I mean, no question. This was a bizarre, I mean, a truly a bizarre moment in recent uh, S&P 500 large cap public company history. I mean, this was up there with whenever, you remember the story when Gates walked out on Connie Chung? I mean, that was until now one of my favorites, but I think I'm going to put Mike's little moment here right up there with the Connie Bill uh, uh, tussle. So, so what's strange here is two things. One, obviously, the security issue is a legitimate question. It wasn't that it was an illegitimate question. Whether Mike at, uh, at RIM believes that the issue's been settled is a separate point from whether it's a legit question. It's a legitimate question and one that gets asked all the time. And the question is, is given the interest that countries around the world have, in particular in the Middle East, North Africa, in getting access to BlackBerry Messenger messages, which uh, travel over the RIM network, you know, how secure should people feel about doing these kinds of messaging and communications back and forth over the service? He may think that's settled. It's a legit question. So, but, so put that aside for a second. The thing that I think at least is interesting or entertaining, depending on how you want to look at it, is why he reacted the way he did. And I don't think it has anything to do with that he's been asked the same question too many times. I think it's that it, this, this pressure about playbook, which you alluded to, you know, off the top. So there's this, these two interesting things going on at once, but the pressure is just gigantic right now. How bad of a move is this in terms of PR for RIM? I mean, how poorly <laughs> does this reflect on not just him, but the company? Yeah. Uh, yes, yes, and yes. I mean, so it reflects poorly. It reflects poorly on him, reflects poorly on the company, and reflects poorly in terms of suggesting that they really are feeling the pressure with respect to the playbook launch, which is going to do nothing to reassure investors that the, the, the playbook launch is going to come off in a way that investors who are, you know, long, who are still, you know, very much long rim, uh, are hoping for. So, you know, you put those three pieces together, it's got to make you, you awfully jumpy about what's, what's happening or going to happen over the the next you know, quarter and next few quarters after the launch. So, you know, uh, you could hear in the background, it sounded to me like some PR handler shouting things and saying, you know, damn, don't answer that or answer that. They should have been providing very different advice. So whether it's Mike yeah. or his advice, both were bad. There was definitely a lot of conversation going on there. What <laughs> yeah. does RIM yeah. need to do with the playbook and the BlackBerry to face up to competition? from Apple. I mean, what do they need to do to turn the company image around? It has to be a developer's best friend. I've said it, you know, m m you know, so many times to the startups that I work with, but the only thing that matters anymore is that RIM comes up the pecking order in terms of it can't be the fifth platform that developers look at after they build an iPhone app, after they build an Android app, after they build a Windows mobile app, or after they build, you know, whatever else, uh, that finally then they get around to building a RIM app. They've got to move up the developer ladder in terms of being the, fa if not the number one or two, it's got to be the number three favorite ecosystem system for app vendors to build stuff because handsets are no longer about voice, they're about apps. And if you can't be dominant in terms of being one, two, or three in apps, you're no place. You're, you know, you're Coleco, you're, you're, you know, you're Tandy in the day, you're, you're just, you're, you're an also ran and you're going nowhere. So that's the goal. Quickly, Paul, uh, the playbook they have said will support Android apps. How much will that really help? Well, it helps because, you know, it's sort of like saying that the current version of Macs also run Windows. But the question is, is, you know, what's the performance? What happens to battery life? And all of these things we aren't going to know until we actually get to launch. What's going to happen with respect to the form factor and how they work? So it's a, it's a checklist item. I'm not convinced it's a seller for anybody who's really paying attention. All right, Paul Kodrowski, Bloomberg contributor and editor of the blog Infectious Greed. You can check out Paul's blog at Bloomberg.com. Thanks so much, Paul, for joining us. And